ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته dear viewers brothers and sisters welcome again for another episode from the title that is the prophet counseling today we're going to be talking about another counseling from the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and i could give it a title that is how to enter paradise not just without punishment but without reckoning straight away to the jannah and without punishment it's a narration and it's a story and it's a fascinating story from a follower called Hussein ibn Abdul Rahman rahimahullah and he is from the era of the followers that comes after the companions student of knowledge and he was sitting in a circle and the circle belongs to Sayyid ibn Jubayr and this person is to be as well a scholar from the era of the followers now while he was sitting he was narrating to us what happened Sayyid ibn Jubayr is asking his students Who's amongst you had seen the shooting star, the flaming fire that took place last night? So, Husayn ibn Abdul Rahman, he said, I said, I saw it. But I was not in a prayer. But I was stung. I was bitten by a poisonous animal. So the scholar had asked, What did you do? So he said, I asked for ruqya, incantation. So the scholar is asking his student, Why did he do that? Why did he seek for it, ruqya? He said, Hadithun haddathana, a shabi That is a narration which a shabi another scholar from the ear of the followers, he taught us and he told us. So he said, And what did a shabi tell you? So he said, An ibn ibn al-Aslami, from Buraida, that is the companion. That is, he said, لا رقية إلا من عين أو حمى. There is no رقية beneficial except for the رقية, the incantation against the evil eye, or a poisonous animal, or a stung, or a sting, or a bite of a poisonous animal. So he said, قد أحسن من انتهى إلى ما قد سمع. A person is done very well who implements and acts according to what he hears. ولكن then he says to and he says in the scholar, Haddathan ibn Abbas, that Abdullah ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet وسلم, told us that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Uridat alayya al-umam. The whole nations were made to be passing in front of me. Fara'aytu al-Nabiyya wa ma'ahu al-Rahd wa al-Ruhayr. I've seen a Prophet followed by from three to nine people. Fara'aytu al-Nabiyya wa ma'ahu al-Rajul wa al-Rajulan. And I've seen a Prophet followed by one or two. And I've seen a prophet followed by none, no one. قال, then I was made to see a group of people, a large group of people. So I said, these are my ummah, these are my followers. The prophet of Allah is asking and saying, this is my ummah. He said, no, this is not your ummah. This is the followers of Musa alayhi salam. Then I looked on another, on the other horizon, and I saw a great group. And they said, this is your ummah. And they said, look onto the other horizon. I saw to the other horizon. I looked, this is your ummah also. وَمَعَهُمْ And along with them, 70,000 who will enter paradise without reckoning and without punishment. Then the Prophet wasallam, he goes inside his house and he leaves the masjid and the companions, they start now talking to each other. They are disputing who are these the 70,000. Some of them, they said, those are the ones who accompany the Prophet of Allah the whole of his life. Some of them, they said, no, they are the ones who had migrated with the Messenger of Allah. Some, they said, no, they are the ones who were born at Islam. That means they did not associate anything with Allah Azza wa Jal. They did not commit any shirk. Then the Messenger of Allah came out. And then he saw that they were disputing about something. What are you disputing about? They said, Messenger of Allah, about those 70,000. So he said, those 70,000 from my ummah, 
those are the ones لا يسترقون ولا يتطيرون ولا يكتوون وعلى ربهم يتوكلون those are the ones who do not seek ruqya the one do not believe in omens and the ones who do not cauterize and the ones who are putting their trust solely in Allah the Almighty. So, Ukasha ibn Mihsan, one of the companions called Ukasha, said, Messenger of Allah, Ud'u Allah an akuna minhum. Invoke Allah, supplicate to Allah, O Messenger of Allah, that I will be among those 70,000. He said, Anta minhum, you are one of them. Another person stood up, he said, Messenger of Allah, call Allah that I will be amongst them. He said, Sabaqaka biha Ukasha. Ukasha was first. Now, this is the story which we'll be discussing, inshallah, in this episode, in the coming episode or two. The first thing that we come to the story of Husayn ibn Abdul Rahman, when he was talking to the scholar Sayyid ibn Jubayr. And Sayyid ibn Jubayr, as a teacher, and he is talking to his students, and he's now questioning them. So he said, Ayyukum ra'al kawkab alladhin qadda al-bariha. Who's amongst you had seen the shooting star, the flaming fire? that shot or it had happened last night. So this is like attracting the attention of the students. Also one of the students, he said, and that is Hussein Abdul Rahman. He said, Ana, it is me. Ama inni lam akun fi salah. I was not in a prayer. Now, the shooting star and the flaming fire that takes place is something which is very interesting. Something that people, they are all the time after the reason behind them. Now, scientifically, it's been explained, but there is the hidden cause of them. Why does it take place? And no further than what the Prophet ﷺ told us about it, that we could learn what is the real reason behind the shooting stars. We have Abdullah ibn Abbas narrates for us a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ. He said that a man from the companions, remember Abdullah ibn Abbas was a young companion, so he did not see everything that the Prophet ﷺ used to do but he used to hear from the older companions. So he said, a man from the companions of the Prophet of Allah told us that we were with the Messenger of Allah one night and a shooting star took place. So we saw a flaming fire that was passing by, a shooting star, a comet. So the Prophet wasallam asked us, the companions, he said to them, what did you used to say during the Jahiliyyah, during the pre-Islamic time, during the paganism? What did you used to say regarding this issue when you see it? He said, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and His Messenger knows best. They're saying, well, we don't know, but we used to say that this night a great person was born or a great person had died. So the Prophet ﷺ correcting their understanding and is telling them the reason behind this phenomena, which is a shooting star. So he said to them, verily, this phenomena does not take place for the death or the birth of someone. It's actually a sign which is connected to the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if Allah Azza wa Jal, glorified be He, He is, and exalted above all, that they associate as partners with Him. And when He decrees a matter, the angels who are, who are holding the throne, they will glorify Allah the Almighty. And then the ones who are below them, they will hear the glorification and will glorify Allah Azza wa Jal until this glorification goes down all the way to the inhabitants from the angels of the worldly heaven, the near heaven, the near skies. And then they will start in questioning what is happening, what took place. Each layer from the angels will ask the ones who are above them until they ask the ones who are the holders of the throne and they will tell them about the matter. What did Allah command? So this command will be taken by those angels and there are jinn who steal the hearing, they steal the commands. They go on top of each other, trying to steal the commands from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did he say? So they can't go further than the near heaven. So when the command is spread around the inhabitants of the heavens, amongst them the angels who are the inhabitants of the lower heaven, then the jinn is able to hear the command of Allah, what he had decreed, as for example, a flood to take place in such and such place or something in an earthquake is going to take in such and such place. This jinn on the top will take that command and then he will give it to the one below him till it reaches the soothsayer or the fortune teller. Now, there's a flaming fire or driving comet or a shooting star will hit him. Either it will hit him before he gives the news 
or tell it to the soothsayer, or it will hit him afterwards. But if he was managed to give it to the soothsayer, then the soothsayer will start telling the people on such and such day, there will be such and such thing happening. Now, that is a true fact. But the people will even believe in every single lie that he added to this true fact. So this soothsayer, this magician, this sorcerer will add to that true fact hundreds of lies. How do you say it's a hundred lies or 99 lies? It doesn't matter, but it means a lot of lies. The people will start believing him because of a single true fact. That is the jinn that he had stolen from the Almighty. Now we understand the reason behind the shooting star. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that in a number of surahs. For example, we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah As-Saffat, إِنَّا زَيَّنَّا السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِزِينَةٍ الْكَوَاكِبِ Verily, we had adorned the heaven with a al-kawakib. These are the stars. زِينَةِ الْكَوَاكِبِ So the stars are to be a sign of beauty. قَالْ وَحِفْظًا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانِ النَّارِدِ And also, it is a protection against every rebellious devil. قَالْ لَا يَسَّمَّعُونَ إِلَى الْمَلَئِ الْأَعْلَى وَيُقْذَفُونَ مِنْ كُلِّ جَانِبِ That every time they want to steal the hearing, they will be pelted from every side. Pelted with what? With flaming fire, with deriving missiles, with shooting stars. قَالْ دُحُورًا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ وَاصِبٌ Duhur and disgrace to them. And also they will have a severe torment. قَالْ إِلَّا مَنْ خَطِفَ الْخَطْفَةِ Except for the one who managed to steal the hearing, the command, before he was being shot. فَأَتْمَعَهُ شِهَابٌ ثَاقِبٌ And then he will be followed and pursued by a shihab and thaqib by a driving missile. And it will be piercing with brightness. And inshallah will continue after the break. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY 3008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Questions, questions, questions. Suggestions, suggestions, suggestions. Invitations, invitations. Sir, can we do tawaf without you do? Can we pray three rakah with her? Can a woman follow a funeral procession? Today, there are amateurs. There are those who are pros. There are people who do not know. Yet there are those who are students of knowledge. Isn't it time for you to join the pros? Don't you want to learn more and more about your religion? To have answers your queries and questions, join me on Umdatul Ahkam. Grab the chance to analyze your faith 
by knowing the tenets of Islam. Join Asim Al Hakim in Umdatul Ahkam next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back after the break. And we are at the moment explaining the words regarding the shooting star. And let me tell you something regarding that when the Prophet sallallahu had the revelation and he had the Quran sent to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made the protection to be stronger. So he reinforced the protection against the stealing of the commands because Allah azza wa jal does not want the Quran to be mixed up with what the commands had been stolen or what the jinn can do. So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that in Surah Al-Jinn. So Allah azza wa jal, he says regarding those jinns are from the righteous ones. They say, وَأَنَّا لَمَسْنَا السَّمَاءَ فَوَجَدَنَاهَا مُلِئَتْ حَرَسًا شَدِيدًا وَشُهُبًا We have touched the heavens and we found it to be filled with stern guards, strong guards. قَالْ وَشُهُبًا And flaming fire that is deriving comets or shooting stars. وَأَنَّا كُنَّا نَقْعُدُ مِنْهَا مَقَاعِدَ لِلسَّمْعِ That is, we used to, before the revelation of the Prophet of Allah, we used to sit in stations to steal the hearing, the commands. فَمَا يَسْتَمِعِ الْآنَ يَجِدْ لَهُ شِهَابَ الرَّصَدَ But now, when we're trying to steal the hearing, we find a driving missile of flaming fire waiting for us, watching us in ambush. After the death of the Prophet wasallam. Some of the scholars had differed regarding the issue is still the heavens are being guarded or the guard has gone back as it was before the revelation. Well, maybe we are tend to have the correct opinion is that at the moment the stealing takes place. So it went back as it was before the revelation to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now coming back to our story, Husayn ibn Abdul Rahman. So he was sitting with Sa'id ibn Jubair. Sa'id ibn Jubair is asking who's amongst you had seen the shooting star last night. So Sayyid ibn Abdul Rahman, he said, Verily, it is me. But, Ama inni lam akun fi salah. But I was not in a prayer. Walakinni ludirt. But I was stung or bitten by a poisonous animal. Now, nobody had asked him, Were you in a prayer or not? Why did he say that? You see, this is called ikhlas, an ultimate ikhlas, the ultimate sincerity. A person wants to remove any idea that jumps to your mind as soon as you heard him, you see, oh, he saw the shooting star which takes place during the night. He must have been doing qiyam or a prayer. So straight away, he wants to protect his tawheed and monotheism. So he said, verily, I was not in a prayer. Don't think I was in a prayer. Now compare that with what happens to some of us when he's been in such a same position. What would he say? Oh, verily, I was in the fifth rak'ah of my qiyam, subhanallah. So this person, he's trying to protect his tawheed. I was not praying. But I was awake. Why was he awake? He was awake because he was stung or bitten by a poisonous animal. Now that concerns the teacher. So Sayyid ibn Jubayr straight away he asked, what did he do? He wants to know, did he do you know, proper thing in order to protect himself? It's not something to lay around with. He wants to know as well, did he do the right thing? And also if he did the right thing, he wants to benefit from him. Because a teacher can benefit from the student. The student can benefit from the teacher. So he said, istarqaytu. Husayn ibn Abdul Rahman, the student, is saying to his teacher, I had sought ruqya, incantation. Now, incantation is sayings, or you could say things that comes from the text of the Quran or from the Sunnah or from others, that is to cure something. He said, Qal I sought ruqya. He said, ala Now, Sayyid ibn Jubayr, before he says to him that seeking ruqya is not the best thing that to do, but he wants to understand why did he do that? So he inquired, why did you see Krukya? So he said, Hadithun haddathanahu shabi. Straight away the student, Husayn ibn Rahman, he said, a narration that a shabi, another scholar, like Sayyid ibn Jubayr, he had told us about. So what did the shabi tell you? So he said, An Buraidat ibn Husayn ibn al-Aslami, and he's quoting now a companion, that he said, La ruqyata illa min aynin al huma that there is no ruqya beneficial more than the ruqya which is against the evil eye or the ruqya against a sting or a bite from a poisonous animal. Now, here we find the ruqya from the ayn, the ruqya from the 
poisonous animal. Al Ain, which is means the eye, or it means here the evil eye. What is the ruqya against the evil eye, and what is this type of ruqya? This is what we're going to be discussing, inshallah, in this section, inshallah. So we say, first of all, a ruqya in al Ain, the incantation regarding the evil eye. Al Ain, what is Al Ain? Ain, Prophet said, Al Ainu Haqq. The eye is a true fact. That means the evil eye is a truthful fact. We call it in some of the countries, Nazar. It's called a Nazar. In Arabic, Nazra. So somebody had eyed him. And the Prophet وسلم, he said, Walau kana shay'un sabiqu li qadar ayn. And if there is something to precede the decree, and there will be nothing to precede the decree, it will be the eye. It means an emphasis that the evil eye takes place with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, we have a hadith from Jabir, the Prophet said, Verily, the evil eye will make the person die and enter the grave, and will make as well the camel to die, and it used to be, and to be cooked in the cauldron, in the big saucepan. And also the Prophet ﷺ, he said, same thing Jabir radiallahu anhu in racist hadith, أَكْثَرُ مَا يَمُوتُ مِنْ أُمَّتِي بَعْدَ قَضَاءِ اللَّهِ وَقَدَرِهِ مِنَ الْعَيْنِ Most of my ummah, they die after the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal as a reason from the evil eye. So it's something which is important to know about. Messenger of Allah, he comes to the house and he sees a girl and she had a color on her face. And her face is not having the natural color. So he says, which is like a yellowish the face, so he says, Inna biha nazar. It's got nazar. Nazar or nazar as some of the countries they say. It's got nazar. Fastarqu laha. He said, make ruqya for her. And also Abu Dhar, radiallahu an, in a race from the Prophet, وسلم, he said, Verily, in al ayna the evil eye will stick to the man until it makes him to climb up a high place, like a mountain, and then it will make him to drop down. And this is by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it will make him to drop down from the mountain. It makes him to die. So that is why the Messenger of Allah وسلم, commanded us that we never see something that is good or nice and beautiful. Something that you like from your brother. Even he's a Muslim or a non-Muslim. If you find something from a brother, that is to say, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, La quwwata illa billah. Mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name. Don't mention except for Allah's name. Because this is the way to, you could say, disinfect to dismantle the power of the evil eye. The way to say MashaAllah. As soon as you say MashaAllah, the evil eye will not be as powerful. It might be an evil eye, but it will be disinfected. It will be nullified totally maybe. Say MashaAllah. Even if you look at yourself in the mirror, you find yourself MashaAllah beautiful. Don't say wow we, you know, wow we will end up for example with a burnt face the following day. Person was looking at his children and was really so fascinated with the beauty of their children. He said, oh, wow, we, and then following day, one of them got flu, and the other one has got in the hospital, and the third one. So be careful. This is a very important issue. And I'm going to narrate for you a story that took place between two companions, Amr ibn Rabi'ah and Sahl ibn Hunayf. Both companions, they were in the Medina, and they left to the Juhfa. And they were in a place called Al-Kharrar. And there's a waterfall there. Sahl ibn Hunayf took off the top of his clothes, so he's topless, and he started having and bathing himself into the waterfall. Now, Amr ibn Rabi'ah, as soon as he looked at him, he saw a white skin. So he said, wow. Ma wala jilda adra, wala jilda mukhabba. I've never seen as white skin as much as this. Even it's whiter than the skin of a virgin. Whiter than the skin of someone who's a girl who's never seen the sun. As soon as he said it, lubit means that he just fell on the floor. He fell, moving like moveless, can't move. As soon as this happened, they went to the Prophet ﷺ and they asked the Messenger of Allah. So he said straight away, Man tattahimun? Who do you accuse? This is like a crime. Whom do you accuse? They said, Attahimu Amira. We accuse Amr because he said so and so. As soon as he said it, he fell down. So he called for Amr, and then he told him off. And he was harsh to him. Why one of you wants to kill his brother? So he called it a murder. But he did not intend to kill him. He said those words because he was astounded. Now, if you like something from your brother, he said, so if you have seen something you like, 
and say, mashallah, tabarakallah, la ilaha illallah. Just mention anything to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La quwwata illa billah. Then he asked Amr to, for the cure. So he said to him, Iqtasil. That is, make a wash. And that is how to make the wash. That is, to make the wudu. Qal, wa dakhilata izari. Even the inside of his izar. So for example, the clothes which are touching his internal body, as well to be dipped into that water. And then the Prophet ﷺ took that water and then he poured it from the back of Sahl. On top of his head, from the back of Sahl. As soon as he poured it, Sahl went up like nothing had happened to him. Let me tell you something, that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, If you've been asked to give a wash, you must give a wash. So if a person thought that you are the one who had eyed him, put an evil eye on him, and he asks you to give a wash, don't be provoked. Don't say, why do you accuse me? Don't just give him a wash, because sometimes you give an evil eye unintentionally. You don't mean it. But if, for example, it was so embarrassing for you to ask, and maybe you think that that person, if you ask him to give a wash, and he might go mad and do something which is unexpected, then you could do it in a way which will not provoke him, as we're going to discuss it, inshallah, in the story of our sheikh. And inshallah, we will be discussing this in the following episode, inshallah. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yanfa'na bima qad sami'na to benefit us from what we had heard. Jazakumullahu khayra wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alam. Allahu, Allahu, ya Rabbi, ya Allah. Allahu, ya Rabbi, ya Allah. La ilaha illa Allah. La ilaha illa Allah. La ilaha illa Allah. محمد رسول الله محمد رسول الله أرجو رضاك يا أنت الرحيم هبني عطاك يا أنت الكريم منك العطاء يا أنت العظيم فيك الرجاء يا The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 30008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution.